Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another video. And I know what you guys might be thinking. Eck, it's sure been a while since you've covered any art theft or plagiarism topics. Does that mean that you really ran out of stuff to cover and that the problem was much smaller than you initially suggested? Well, no, of course not. And for those who haven't watched my other videos in the series, basically Star Wars has been found time and time again to continually use fan renders and models for ships and vehicles especially, instead of actually illustrating their own content. This problem is especially common in comic books. We actually found a panel from the Star Wars Allegiance comic, which blatantly traced a fan's ship models that they were using for physical ships, like for Star Wars tabletop, to the point where you could actually see the pegs that the ships would stand on. I've been working with another person to slowly catalog as many of these examples as we can find, and I can confidently say that there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of these cases. The one we'll be talking about today, however, does not come from a Star Wars comic book. It comes from the cover of Collapse of the Republic, which is a source book for the Fantasy Flight Star Wars RPG. And before I continue, I have to give a massive, massive shout out to my good friend Corey for pointing this out. As a note, Corey has some of the best Star Wars channels on the internet. Right now, his lore channel is at about 20,000 subscribers. I would really like to get those numbers up. And if you subscribe to him today, you'll be able to catch his video on this topic, which will come out tomorrow or the next day. Even if you're not interested in that, Corey puts out probably the most in-depth Pure Legends videos, so if you enjoy that on my channel, you'll love it on his. Let's get that 20,000 number up. Anyway, Corey pointed me towards an art station post by our good friend of the channel, Fractal Sponge. Now, I'm sure many of you know who Fractal Sponge is, but if you don't, he's probably the most well-known modeler and fan artist within the Star Wars community, at least when it comes to spaceships. And Fractal Sponge isn't just a fan artist, actually, because several of his ships, including the Secutor, the Allegiance, the Asserter, the Bellator, and more, have actually made Made their way into Star Wars canon. And Fractal Sponge's models are so good that this is not the first time that his work has been stolen. Eventually I'll probably try to put together a compendium of all of his stolen work, although that would take a very long time. But in one video, we covered how his Asserter Star Destroyer was blatantly stolen for a book and actually labeled the wrong ship. Fractal Sponge, however, hasn't just modeled his own ships. He's also taken his shot at modeling official Star Wars vehicles, like, for example, the Imperial Star Destroyer, which too, because of its high quality, has been stolen and placed on various official and unofficial pieces of Star Wars merchandise or works. As Fractal Sponge's recent art station post pointed out, and I'll link to that down in the description, the stolen culprit today is a beautiful model he made of the Juggernaut, the wheeled vehicle from Star Wars Episode 3. So when he posted the model, he actually included several different angles, a few of which I'm showing on the screen right now. And as you can see, this is an extraordinarily highly detailed render. It's largely consistent with what we see in the movies, but there's also a lot of detail that's unique to this specific juggernaut. If you look at, for example, the paneling on the front of the vehicle, that is an artistic liberty taken by Ansel rather than something required to be on the vehicle. Now, if you're an art thief, the good thing about Fractal Sponge's work is that he posts all of these really, really high quality models in a variety of positions. So not only did the artist for the back cover of this Star Wars role-playing game supplement use his vehicle once, they actually used it four times. And Fractal himself posted a great image which shows that each one of these juggernauts is based off a reference model. And to be honest, they most likely just took his images, took the background out and then placed them and added some slightly different lighting and coloration to make it fit in with the rest of the scene. But still, the image is dominated by work that was not created by the person who was getting credit for and who was getting paid to illustrate this cover. But you guys know me, when I see this happen once, I always suspect that it's probably happened more than once. So I took a look at each of these vehicles and the first one that really jumped out at me just because of how it was placed was the Republic Y-Wing. And wouldn't you know, within maybe two minutes of searching, I found the actual source for this Y-Wing. You can tell it's the exact same, 
mostly because of the detailing in the canopy, which matches exactly, but really shouldn't, and because even some of the lower poly features, like this little thing here on the side of the fuselage, are brought over to the image. I quite like the Y-Wing model, by the way. It's by Admiral Tributon over on Sketchfab. I'll link that as well down in the description. Looking at the other ships, the Acclimator does seem to be an original creation. At least I couldn't find the model it's based off of. Of the Lat gunships, at least one is based off a of still from Attack of the Clones, which personally I think is completely fine. But at this point, we just have to ask, what's the point of buying these books if the art is basically just somebody rearranging existing models? And Fractal himself even said, this isn't just a theft, but this is a lazy theft with no attempt to repaint the asset, just essentially magic wanding the background and slapping a filter on. But to me, laziness is only part of the issue. It really does suck that we're paying for all the Star Wars material, sometimes based on the quality of the covers, which frequently does steal fan art. But there's the greater issue of the ethics of taking something that's not yours. Legally, does Fractal Sponge and the hundreds or thousands of other artists who have had their stuff taken have any right of action against Fantasy Flight Games or Disney or Star Wars as a brand? It's hard to say. Morally, however, it's clear that Star Wars knows when they use fan art, they should be paying the person. Person. I mean, they commissioned Fractal Sponge to make renders and models for them in the past. That of course isn't the case here. At the very least, even if they don't pay the person, they 1000% need to get permission and need to credit the artist. I mean, this is really basic stuff. Even if someone is making fan art for something in your universe, and you have the legal right to take it, which I do think is questionable, and perhaps even incorrect, you at the very least need to recognize a person's art. You can't pass off Fractal Sponge's art as the art of the person who made this back cover. Fractal Sponge and Admiral Tributon deserve to be recognized for their work. When somebody makes art for a Star Wars movie, and again we see that lat taken, I am less concerned about that, and it's probably even mentioned in the book somewhere that there have been shared assets. But Star Wars really, really needs to do better. I wouldn't be exaggerating if I were to say that I would guess that there are a thousand, if not tens of thousands, of Star Wars artists who have had their work taken, whether that's on a small scale, like a turbo laser or something slotted into the background of an image, or when it comes to something major, like official Star Wars posters stealing fan art. Now, I do believe that there will be more of this story to tell in the future, so again, make sure you go follow Corey. He'll be updating this situation either tomorrow or the next day, and I might do a future video on it as well if more details emerge. I will say, though, as I was researching this, I found several more cases of not only this artist stealing more work, but just more art theft generally that I wasn't aware of. So this topic is one that I unfortunately am going to have to continue to cover to some degree. But guys, that's all I have for now. Hope you guys enjoyed.